most of our showing you other kind of things that can be solved, and apart from the same problem that everybody of us has solved. Uh, so uh, I want to talk uh, somehow about a singular problem. Um, so I will talk about the um, a model problem. The existence is already a non-trivial uh, uh, problem in this uh, subject. Uh, then uh, I will talk about a rough periodic interface, uh, and eventually, if I have time, in the case of periodically perforated domain. Otherwise, uh, Federica, which is here, uh, uh, will talk about uh, in his uh, presentation on Friday. So, uh, so this is the model problem. So instead, uh, you remember that till now we had uh, minus divergence gradient of u equal f. Now uh, we have also this uh, term on the denominator, uh, u to the power gamma, uh, with the Dirichlet condition. Let us look for the moment in uh, the model in a fixed domain omega. So omega is uh, uh, open bounded set, gamma is positive, uh, f is uh, a function who is a suitable uh, summability, uh, and a is uh, as before in m uh, alpha beta, something like that. Uh, and so we want to find uh, solutions in the sense of distribution uh, so in the sense of the variational formulation, which belongs a priori in W11 log of omega. Okay, they need to be positive to give a sense to u to the power gamma, because gamma is supposed not to be integer. And so uh, we would like to have something like that. So A gradient U gradient phi. Okay, in this, uh, sometimes uh, here gradient is uh, denoted by D instead of nabla, and equal so F over U to the power gamma for every C, phi, which is C1 with the compact support. Okay, so now, uh, what are the physical motivations for that? Uh, in uh, several models, like uh, appear some uh, lower order term with uh, a singularity. Uh, for instance, in viscous fluid, in non-Newtonian fluids, in some problem from chemistry which are related to some uh, enzymatic kinetics, or uh, some model from Langmuir in Del Schwood. Okay. Now, uh, also, the source term who depends in singular way from the solution appears also in some transfer of electrical uh, conductor. Okay, so what is done in the literature? The simplest idea uh, to find a solution is to approach your problem which has a singularity with another problem uh, with uh, a Non -sing uh, uh, but which is not singular, then to show as often in a linear problem that the sequence of the solution of the approaching problems converges to something, some function which is a solution of your desired problem. Okay, now uh, this is, was done initially from Boccardo uh, or Sina, for instance. I see, uh, okay, only two persons, El Boccardo and El Orsino, <laughs> uh, okay? And uh, also from Boccardo and Casado Diaz, which also applied that uh, strategy for G-convergence problem. Okay, so how they cut the singularity? Okay, more or less everybody cut like that. You have uh, the truncation function, which is something uh, uh, which is uh, uh, between uh, uh, minus k and k is just uh, x, uh, t in this case, and so uh, for a value bigger than k, uh, it's just uh, cut at the level k, and uh, down for negative value to the, to the level minus k. Okay, so, okay, so obviously tk of t is uh, in, uh, bounded by, uh, by k for every k, that means that if you replace here, oops, sorry. If you replace here 
F over V to the power gamma by the truncated that the order n of that one. Okay, n, k, okay, this is n or k. Then, uh, okay, then you have no anymore a bad singularity because this is something which is bounded. Okay, observe that when, uh, uh, what is the singularity? The singularity is when the solution approaches to zero, then it goes to plus infinity and we want to avoid the deck. Sorry? Uh, no, this is you, sorry. It's a mistake, it's a sprint. For each n, you look at the solution of that, but this is not v, this is u. So you have a un, actually. Uh, sorry, there are some, several misprints. Okay, this is minus divergence a of gradient un equal the truncated of f over u gamma. Okay? Sorry. And then uh, this is sequence un is decreasing and uh, one can show that for every x in a small omega where a small omega is any any subset of uh, your omega uh, your omega you have omega here you take any small omega and uh, on any small omega you have that the sequence is decreasing and it has an uh, infimum which is positive strictly and which depend on the omega this is why, uh, this is because the nonlinearity is decreasing and the main tool is the strong maximum principle. Now, once uh, the strategy of Boccardo Orsini is that then, uh, since it's decreasing, you can find uh, a limit function uh, u uh, such that u is bigger or equal than c omega uh, positive, uh, bigger than zero. And moreover, you can show that the truncated are bounded by f normal phi in L infinity over a constant to the power gamma on the support of phi. Okay, this strategy is very nice and allows to study G convergence. That means homogenization in a fixed domain, but it doesn't anymore, uh, is not anymore applicable when you have uh, a varying domain. Why? Uh, for instance, if f is not decreasing, because, okay, this is the model case f over u to the power uh, gamma, but you can just take a function f of x and s, which uh, go to zero when, uh, which go to infinity when the variable go to zero, uh, like uh, in the uh, case studied by Crandall, Rabinovitz, and Tartar, a way uh, studied the existence in a regular framework. Also, if you study homogenization problem, for instance, in a perforated domain, uh, in this case, uh, you cannot anymore play with the small omega because. Uh, uh, Okay, because if you, you have uh, all everywhere, then what you do with your small uh, omega since the holes are varying? So uh, you have no, monocity, uh, no mon monotonicity, and uh, in this case, the memo scheme doesn't work. For instance, in the case of the Riclet condition and very small uh, hole, like uh, I told about. Uh, uh, in previous uh, lecture, uh, one has this problem, uh, and this was uh, studied more or less in parallel to this uh, work I will present here by uh, Daniela Giacchetti and Francois Murat. Then, uh, in this, also, if you're zero in this context of uh, small holes, if you have a strange term where me is really a measure, this uh, make a problem for the strong maximal principle. Okay, so here in this uh, study, we use a different strategy, like those used by Daniela and uh, Martire Saparisio, Murat, and so on, uh, in this uh, paper. Okay. So our strategy here, first, okay, we have in mind the, the case of uh, oscillating boundary uh, with the jump. Then we want to find another strategy for the existence. 
And uh, once we have a prior estimate for the existence, uh, actually we have also prior estimates for homogenization for in the same way. So uh, the idea is the approximate to the problem uh, by non-singular problem as before. But uh, when we pass to the limit, we do something different. So the main tool is to look, to an, uh, make an analysis of the singular term containing the singularity, where we split this term in two parts, one part which is good, one part which is bad, but there we know how to manage because uh, we take a small value of the function there. I will show you. Then, uh, well, this is what I say. So we split the term with the singularity in a term where the solution is close to the singularity and the term which is far, which is good. And so near the singularity, we have to find a more uh, smart uh, a priori estimates. Um, and so uh, this will be good for the case we present here for oscillating interface. And also for the case of periodicals with size epsilon with the Neumann condition, for instance, which is uh, another uh, case. So uh, in the, with Daniela Giacchetti, we studied the case with the oscillating boundaries. And with Sarah from Roma, and with Sarah Monsurov of the University of Salerno, Federica Raimondi, uh, okay, which was a PhD student, but now she finished uh, in Cotutel. We did the case of preferential domain. And now she's going on for another case with the holes and jump. Okay, so uh, let us uh, talk about our rough periodic interface. Uh, we describe the case of the singular problem in domain with epsilon periodic oscillating boundary with the continuous flux and jump on the solution which is proportional to the conormal derivative. Uh, I think that uh, Daniel will talk about a similar geometry, but for a very different problem, which is a parabolic problem. Uh, I completely forgot <laughs> no, I choose this subject, but I... I Okay, so we present existence and homogenization, sorry, and the results were uh, published here in SIAM in 2016. Okay, so uh, observe just that the transmission condition uh, uh, model an imperfect contact on an interface. And in the linear case, uh, we study, uh, I studied the similar problem uh, with Andrei Piatniski in the simple uh, case, not singular. Uh, also, okay, there are a lot of references with oscillating boundary. Those oscillating boundary are a bit different of those studied, for instance, by Gaudiello or Nanda Kumaran for control, because the, our uh, oscillating boundary became flat at the limit. Uh, instead, in that case, the eight of the is uh, fixed. Okay, so uh, so uh, we denote by omega. Okay, we did not. First, let us see the picture. This is the picture, so this is our domain. We have the upper part and the lower part, Q epsilon 1, Q epsilon 2. We have an interface gamma epsilon. We have the, this interface is, uh, uh, you know, as a, a, the eight of the interface is G bar times epsilon to the power K. Uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, any any of uh, codes is of uh, uh, large uh, epsilon. Okay, so you can see there we did not gamma epsilon uh, the uh, oscillating interface, uh, which is of the form epsilon to the power k g of. Uh, X prime over epsilon, X prime are the first n minus uh, one variable, and G is supposed to be periodic positive and Lipschitz continuous, so that the measure of gamma epsilon goes, uh, the length of gamma epsilon goes to that of the flat uh, segment when epsilon goes to zero. Uh, okay, uh, observe that. 
the, the oscillating interface is in this band uh, from in the rectangle, let us say, uh, which uh, size uh, one and epsilon to the power k. So is volume, the volume of that zone containing the interface goes to zero. Observe also that if k is equal one, then we have epsilon here, epsilon there, so is a self-similar self geometry. Um, if k is bigger than one, we have a flat case. That means it goes really quickly to, to, the, to the flat. And otherwise, uh, with the case between zero and one, we have a highly oscillating interface. Okay, so this is the problem. We have our nonlinearity. Here we, we wrote it like f times a function of u epsilon, which has a singularity in zero. Uh, we have a, a continuity of the flux, and the flux is proportional to the difference of the temperature from the two, the two, the the two solutions uh, by a, a proportionality factor of order epsilon to the power gamma. H, H, H epsilon is just a constant uh, which uh, does the disturb bounded from above and below just for physical reason. Uh, and uh, so we put a zero on the, so I recall you the configuration. This is our domain. So we put a zero here, and we put on that uh, interface, we put uh, the two condition about the flux and the jump of the solution. Okay, so the flux is continuous, the jump is proportional to the flux. Okay, so we assume that the zeta is the positive and lower uh, equal to one to the power s, uh, uh, to the power gamma. We suppose that f is non negative and with uh, some summability that uh, this is the best summability, the lowest summability we, have, we can suppose, which is related to theta, where theta is. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> sorry, this is theta, not gamma, it's theta. Uh, and so H is bounded from below by a con positive constant. A is uh, as usually positive in M alpha beta. And we set A of X, A, X over epsilon, the same of our H, but uh, relative uh, to the N minus one variable. And so we want to discuss existence and uniqueness, asymptotic behavior. So here we have some additional difficulties, which are due to the fact that we have boundary time on the oscillating coefficients. Uh, so we have no fixed space. And also the coefficient matrix A, which also oscillating. So we have... Uh, uh, which was not the case for the result of uh, Giacchetti Mura because they suppose uh, they considered the Laplacian for small rule. Okay, so the functional framework, uh, we have a function on Q, we denote by one the function in the upper part and uh, two the function on the other part. We introduce the set of the functions, we are L2 of Q, uh, such that the, uh, the, uh, the two components are in H1, uh, zero on the boundary with this norm, where uh, with the norm of the gradient in L2 Q minus gamma epsilon, that means that for us the gradient is the absolutely continuous part of the gradient. That means the function with the gradient of the first component up and the gradient of the second component down. And we, thanks to the Poincare inequality, uh, this, is a, this is a norm and we have that inequality, uh, Poincare inequality. 
Okay, so we define uh, the corresponding uh, things for uh, epsilon equals zero, that means for the flat domain, the corresponding space is two. And observe that the, the characteristic function of, uh, uh, for instance, the characteristic function of the upper part go just to this upper part and the same for the lower part. Um, and we denote by gamma epsilon zero the union of both boundary. And so uh, in the paper with Piatnitsky, we proved that if kappa is bigger or equal than one, then we have two family of linear uh, continuous extension operator with the usual properties. Okay, when kappa is bigger than uh, uh, or equal than one, uh, we have a uniform sorbel of Poincaré inequality and everything is nice. Now, if kappa is smaller than one, this is not true anymore. We cannot have uniform extension operator because the, the height of the cox is much greater, greater than its width. So the constant uh, blow uh, is of uh, order epsilon and blow up as epsilon goes to zero. Okay, so the variational formulation uh, has to be a little bit, uh, uh, is a, a bit uh, uh, long because we have to specify the sense we give to any things because zeta of u epsilon is uh, uh, singular. So we ask to the solution. First, to be, to stay in the space, okay, consider the ball. We ask uh, to, uh, that u epsilon is almost everywhere strictly positive in Q, in the cylinder. And we ask that the integral of f zeta u epsilon phi is finite for every phi in the w epsilon zero. And okay, then we have the rational formulation which we can expect, so we have the well, the second order term, this is the term right hand side, and here we have the jump of the solution, which is multiplied by the jump of the test. As one can see, it happens when uh, one put the first, the first solution up, then the solution down, then you sum, then you get this one up and down, and on the common boundary you have two terms, and when you sum that you get this one. Sorry? U epsilon is the part up, and U epsilon 2 is the part down. U epsilon is, U epsilon is the function in L2, which holds U epsilon R up, U epsilon 2 down. And up and down, U epsilon 1, U epsilon 2 as uh, to gra the gradient. Now, when you make the trace, since we have a jump, the trace from up and the trace from down, they are not similar, not the same. So you, uh, you need to distinguish those traces. This is why I use two different, oops. This is why, I, sorry, this is why here I use two different symbols. Is it a Western or not? Ah, okay, because, uh, yeah, because when uh, you, yeah, gamma you epsilon, Q is equal to Q epsilon 1, you would end Q epsilon 2. Plus okay. gamma epsilon, because yeah. when you, when you live in L2, yeah. when your function live in L2, Q, and Q minus gamma epsilon is the same, so you just write Q. Okay. When you have the gradient, you need to specify and to remove the boundary. This was the question. Yeah. Okay. So, Okay, observe that, uh, okay, one can compute by usual uh, way of uh, boundary integral, this uh, integral, and uh, obtain uh, this one. This is the formula for, uh, uh, for this integral. Uh, this is important because then when we want to pass to the limit as epsilon go to zero from here, we can guess what we get, uh, because the, we have those terms here. So, uh, under this previous assumption, there exists at least a solution U epsilon, this is the theorem, 
And also, if f epsilon is in LR for R bigger than n over 2, then the solution u epsilon for n epsilon is bounded. And if k is bigger or equal than 1, the constant is independent on epsilon. OK, so a third theorem is about uniqueness. If we suppose in addition that zeta of s is not increasing, then the solution is unique. <laughs> OK, so how we do? We approximate as did Boccardo and Orsina by the truncated. We consider the solution of those problems. Then, OK, which has a solution for known uh, results, uh, any fixed point theorem show that uh, bounded uh, nonlinearity are easy to treat. So uh, for the existence, we adapt also some idea, idea from the Giacchetti, Murat, Martinez, Aparicio. Uh, so first we prove that un is bigger or equal than zero in the beginning. We don't want u bigger than equal, we just want u strictly positive. But for the moment, we take un bigger or equal than zero. We prove that un is bigger or equal than zero by a maximum principle. Then we choose a suitable test function to have a priori estimate. Uh, and then we have u epsilon uh, such that uh, for every epsilon, un converge to, to u epsilon, un weakly and strongly in L2, un converge strongly uh, almost everywhere uh, here, and the difference converges to the difference of the solution in L2 gamma epsilon. And I remember that here is n who goes to infinity epsilon at the moment is fixed. And then uh, and then uh, we take the truncated, we take a phi, we take his truncated test, test function, we put in the problem, and we have that uh, equality. Then we pass to the limit here in any term. OK, the difficult term is the singular one. And then, uh, thanks to the previous convergences, the a priori estimates and the fatu lemma, we can prove that actually this one, uh, this term is finite for any phi in W epsilon zero. Um, and then here we can, uh, okay, so uh, we need that because we cannot use Lebesgue theorem for pass. Observe that here we cannot use in epsilon the Lebesgue theorem because we have not converges. No, sorry, I say something wrong. OK, here we cannot use the Lebesgue theorem for passing to the limit because we have not convergence uh, almost everywhere. So what we do is that we pass to the limit splitting the integral. <laughs> the formula disappeared. I don't know where it is. OK, uh, excuse me. OK, I don't know. It's too complicated. OK, anyhow, we split. Where it is the integral? OK. OK, we split the integral. We, we do like that. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what happens with the, the slides. We pass to the limit as n goes to 0. We have this integral, and we write the integral where u epsilon is smaller than mu, and the integral, uh, the integral where u n is smaller than mu, and the integral where u n is bigger than mu. So when u n is bigger than mu, uh, the function is not singular, so no problem. And when it's smaller than mu, we, uh, we use some uh, accurate measure uh, theory argument to pass to the limit. I don't know what happens. So then, by maximum principle, we have that u epsilon is strictly positive. And then we pass to the limit in uh, the left-hand side, and we get the variational formulation for the, uh, for the limit problem. OK, now 
Now let us discuss the, homo the case of uh, the homogenization result. That means when epsilon goes to zero. So uh, we introduce, this is the usual matrix that you have seen uh, since 10 days now. So I skip it. Uh, so suppose that we have the assumption of the theorem uh, for k bigger radical than 1 and f in L2 uh, if kappa is lower than 1. Then uh, we have that uh, there exists a subsequence still denoted epsilon, a function u0, such that u0 is positive, this integral is finite, and we have the following uh, convergences. The strong convergence of the solution, the, strong, the weak convergence of the, up, the zero extension of the gradient to the gradient of this one, and uh, this one, this is the same. I don't know why she, ah, no, no, with the A epsilon, we have the same things. Okay, and also, if we denote U0, 1, 0, 2, the two component of U0, according on, uh, on the three cases for the parameter kappa and gamma, we have three different limit problem. Uh, so in the first case, we have those two conditions or uh, k bigger or equal than 0 and gamma equal 0, or k between 0 and 1, but then cap gamma has to be 1 minus k. In this case, uh, we have the solution of the problem in the flat domain, in the domain with the flat interface, where uh, hgh is the new coefficient for uh, the jump. And agk uh, this is the variational formulation, and A, G, and H is exactly the average of 1 plus the gradient of G uh, to the power 1 on alpha. This is the, actually what you obtain when, uh, if you remember, I wrote the, explicitly the boundary term where there were, I can come back on that uh, probably. Uh, yes. I have a jump on the interface, but I want to show that one. So here you can see that if you have the right coefficient, sometimes this term disappears, sometimes you have a plus one plus this gradient. And so this is natural that this jump is like that. I come back again to that jump. Sorry? This is the jump on the interface. Yes, what is the question? This is the gradient of the, of the, the function which describes the interface. And you know that when you write an integral on a surface, let us say on a curve, you have the gradient, uh, you have the, the, the formula 1 plus, uh, uh, you know? Okay, so the limit problem is still a transmission problem which uh, a jump in the flat interface. In the second case, where the parameters are like that, uh, in this case, this is a nice case because, or trivial case, I don't know, is a case where uh, the limit function is in H10. So at the limit, you don't see the flat interface, you don't think anything. You have just the usual uh, homogenization problem like you started with the Q with no interface. That means that actually this interface is too weak, too, too small, and so the limit do not, uh, at the limit, you forget the interface. Uh, and in the third case, in the third case, which is k okay, bigger or equal than 1 and gamma 0, or those 1, okay, then the interface is really, you know, a wall. That means that at the limit, the two problems split, and you get two different Neumann problems, uh, which are totally independent in uh, the upper part here, of the flat domain and in the lower part. On each one in the interface, you have a Neumann condition. 
those are the variational formulation. Uh, so gamma zero behaves like an isolating interface, actually, because we have independently the two problems. OK, now if we suppose, uh, yeah, OK, uh, what happens till now that actually uh, you prove that there exists a subsequence and function u zero such that blah, blah. Now, till now, the limit problem you have seen were linear, they all had the uniqueness, so there were no problem. If you, you do not have any further assumption, just we stop here. We cannot say that all the sequences converges. But if for any epsilon, but if we add the, some condition, for instance, that zeta is non-decreasing, non then the limit uh, problem has uniqueness, and then all the sequences converge as in the linear case. This is quite uh, typical in a uh, nonlinear uh, problem because most of uh, this is a, a nice case where we can have some uh, uniqueness in general in linear problem. In many linear problems, you have no uniqueness, so the only things you can do is characterize the, the limit point of the, the solutions uh, as a solution on some equation, but uh, that's all. Okay, so here we have this additional condition. The proof, uh, uh, the proof is based on a priori estimates and the same idea of uh, uh, in the existence for the singular term. And uh, uh, what we prove is that the gradient of the solution is a correct result in some sense. That means that we prove that the gradient of the solution behaves like a suitable linear problem associated to u0, and then the difference goes to zero. This idea uh, was uh, used in very different situations in the literature. Originally, it was uh, uh, introduced by Ben Susson, uh, Boccardo, Murat when they studied quadratic nonlinearity. That means uh, things like uh, equation of the type, uh, for instance, minus delta u equal uh, uh, gradient of u squared plus f plus u equal zero, and this kind of uh, things in a fixed domain. Then a long time ago with Antonio Gauriello, we worked for the case of perforated domain, and then several extension is done in several uh, directions. Uh, the proof is quite uh, long and uh, laborious. There are several pages of computations. Uh, so, uh, well, so I, I just stop here because uh, the details are long. I want just to skip the case of perforated domain. So in the case of perforated domain, we have a similar situation, but uh, a similar condition, but on the boundary of the holes. And, uh, and uh, then uh, again, uh, okay, so, but this time, excuse me, uh, in the case, we, the case of a friend of mine we have studied is just the case we, I talk about uh, in the lectures. So that means where you have a, a quasi linear situation, the, the parenthesis is wrong here, and, uh, and uh, uh, a an linear Robin condition with the singular term. And so here we have the additional difficulty about the from the holes. Uh, because the convergence of the characteristic function now is only weak instead uh, to be strong as uh, in the previous case. We wrote some results in this paper and uh, first the existence and then the homogenization. And then now Federica Raimondi is uh, looking at the case of jump. Uh, voila, so the homogenization for the jump is in... Uh, so in the case of jump with Federica, we studied, uh, Raymond, we studied the existence and uniqueness, and then she's working now on the homogenization of uh, the problem. Okay, so any questions?